Hey folks, this is Vagrant. Welcome back to Disco Elysium. We have moved on to the second day and we just met the Hardy Boys? Hardly Boys? I can't remember what they're called. The, uh, guided by our Elizabeth, the legal consult. We're just going to chat with people in the area just the see if things changed. Is nope. And I want to also chat, not with Garth and his little bird, but this dude over here. And I don't seem to have a talk option, so never mind. Right, we have a lot to do today. So, I need to... Oh, it's raining. Go check in with Kuno. Is Kuno still here? There he is, doing Kuno things. I.e. assaulting a dead corpse. Oh, does Kuno care? Oh yeah, so Kuno... <laughs> the boy turns to you, he doesn't care. <laughs> um, Kuno told us that Manana, the very French guy by the blockade at the harbour, at the factory, that he knew about the armor, so we went and talked to him. So? Uh, okay, hey, skill point. All right, okay. He told me you promised to stick the pics on him. He said to thank you, wasn't keen on chasing. He said now you're the king of the entire Jamrock. Uh, North Jamrock? Kuno meant everything north of 881. The rooster fucked Kuno's words up. Kuno doesn't do south, doesn't fuck with the madre. Kuno sent your fat ass running around like jello. Look, pig. Kuno sent you to rough some people up. Kuno played you. That happened. Now you and Kuno should move on. I will remember this, Kuno. You got fucked. You got fucked, pig. Fucked bad. Of course you're going to remember this. Now get the fuck out of here, grief and the Kuno. After this shit, you better have something real interesting to say if you want to stay in Kuno's face. Yeah, real interesting. <laughs> One day. We, we could, I mean, we could right now put points into empathy and give it a go. Um, it's hard to know what to do with Kuno skill points. Doesn't... It feels very limited in a way. I guess we should be unlocking another one of these. Because these are limited, right? So this, this is like a max number of these, so various of my other stats probably don't have that limit. However, my problem is I don't think I want any of these particularly. <laughs> so I was going to hold on until I found one that I was more interested in. So it doesn't tell you what you gain from it, right? Now, so we should we should think about it in a way that um, it doesn't matter what we gain from it in a gameplay sense. It's what do we gain from it, as in what does our character gain from it? You see yourself from above. You're passed out in the blue tiles of the hostel room floor. Even from this distance, you can see your eyelids flutter at the mention of what? A great white object letting out its sweet smell like a lily of the valley. The little man's forgotten its name, but he still remembers the feeling and look, he moves. The feeling animates him. He instinctively reaches out for the feeling's best friend, a bottle of Commodore Red. He puts on his disco's clothes and gets smaller and smaller. We're gonna go for it. Okay, so I've lost authority for a little bit, which is slightly annoying, but it is what it is. Much to do today. Hello, woman. Interesting. Don't think I saw her last time. Also a very good chance she's not new and I just didn't see her. Now, I believe we had a task. Okay. Yeah, lots to do about this, but we're going to run the number on the victim's armour. So we're calling Alice back. That is our first task of today. Inside. You see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Have you heard back from the ICP about the serial number? Yes. The armor was produced by Fairweather in their facilities in Betancourt, sur la clé in 42. It was part of a special order for Corps de Pharmacy, a security firm contracted to protect the interests of Orani's pharmaceutical companies in the Seminine conflict. So, it seems the armor went to Seminine. That's where the paper trail ends, though. Even the film has proven difficult to track. Corps de Pharmacie has been renamed several times over in the years since the armor was issued. The most recently registered film that the ICP has been able to connect to the CDP is a military contractor called Trenel. And the one before it was down well. I think they might be the same contractor. A suit of armor like this would have been manufactured with a particular person's physique in mind. You should ask for whom this suit was fitted. First, the firm continues to, to work for pharmaceutical companies through all these name changes. Hard to say. The client list is rather diverse and incomplete. The only constant seems to be that the mercenaries are always deployed in third and fourth world countries. 
Okay. A suit of armor like this would have been customized to fit the wearer. That must there must be a record of the person to whom it was issued. Yes, but the ICP tends to be reluctant to share private sector records. I could try to talk them into it though. She's a good lass, Alice. Please do try. Sure. Call back tomorrow. Hopefully I will have more information for you then. Fifty sevens, over and out. In the cabin, you see a set of Okay, so task updated that is one for tomorrow moving on forward that's not until tomorrow either i think today's wednesday today's tuesday even gotta ask access to the harbor gotta find some cash there's, uh, there's a lot there's a lot going on here gotta go to the apartment after 9 p.m also gotta go check in the other place at 9 p.m as well hmm That's for that one. I, mean, I wanted to go buy a map, so let's go do that. And then I guess we're going to go over to the harbour. Those are the dudes playing with the balls. Son, oh. you've really let yourself go. It's a disgrace. But Coat Physical Instrument is going to get you back in prime condition. Even if it takes a million push-ups. Okay, Physical Instrument. Forge means an organic steel, Coach. It's going to take blood, sweat, piss and tears but when i'm done with you boy you will be a master athlete let's do it coach behold world here walks a sportsman hands choked and hair kept back with a bandana the homo athleticus huh it's just an intense workout guess i just yeah okay, interesting it's just funny how little things just pop up, you know? Oh, hello. No, okay. Is this the one I talk to? <laughs> the dented yellow mailbox <laughs> greets you with its graffito and bullet holes in the front. Uh, again, I feel like it's very much the kind of thing I would do in real life. I'm just such a, a quirky person like that. Oh, hello. Who are you? <laughs> You see a sturdy woman humming to herself. She seems to be browsing books. A good one? Yes. Hello. Who are you? Me? No one. I'm just a working class woman. She doesn't really want to be disturbed that much. If she's such a working class woman, <laughs> why isn't she working? What are you doing? Looking for something to read. Good, good. I'm a policeman. I know you are. Oh. Do you need the help of a policeman? What with? I don't know. Help her by carrying things? Hmm. <laughs> Maybe she needs a weightlifter. Maybe she needs you to fight her husband. No, that's not it. Maybe your husband is missing. My husband? No, he's not. <laughs> so where could he be? I don't know. At home now? Out drinking with his friends? <laughs> working? Where is this going? With I you? don't know. <laughs> she gives you a short nod. And shifts her attention <laughs> back to books. Her hands move over the book covers. The tips of her fingers look rough, stained with yellow. It seems like she has spent a lot of time at work, smoking. Another comrade. Years of labor are pressing down on her shoulders. She deserves a hug for all the work she's done for I her. so badly want to click the stupid options, but I'm not going to hug the random woman. The woman before you nods. Alright, how you doing, kid? Hello again, sir. Who is that? Oh, that's Auntie Billy. She's nice if a bit distressed. She's your aunt? Oh, no, no, sir. She's a working woman who comes to look at the books a lot. Why is she distressed? I think she is a bad husband. Not very nice or helpful. Oh, the husband is a bad man. You can stop calling me sir, I am but a working man. No, sir, I can't. <clears throat> it would be too tiring to refrain from it. It's already tiring enough to remember to say it all the time. It's nice of you to say I could stop, though. You're welcome. <laughs> I get you. I, for example, can't stop making this face. Okay, yeah, when the next person comes, you'd have to sew a mile. And then, so it is then. Soldier on. That's a friendly enough face. Most of the time. The composure. I never know whether I should put points in these, or should I put points in something else, or can I, can I gain composure through something? I, I don't know if I have to... Oh, I want to go for my um, my coat as well. Lots to do, folks. Lots to do. 
Hello. Alright, I think the maps, if I remember correctly, are up here. Over there. Oh. Everyone knows the most interesting things about fascists was their magic. It's very true. Several maps have been I know. The maps look old and faded. Your I really not have of 0.9 real when I first came here. Always good to be informed of your surroundings. Okay. This large ozone disintegrates in obviously. the northeast, a duck radiating outwards from you. The ocean connections you have little All right, all right, all right we've done this before. <laughs> okay, so we officially have a map. Where's it? Use the interact button in. Oh, right there. The worn map features the patchwork grid of the streets of Martinez, with directions to appropriately touristy locations. Year 48 resides on the upper right corner. Trace a path through the grid. Your finger moves through the various streets. Across Rue de Songes Lane and Rue saint -Sipa, Over saint Brun and Martinez North. Finally, coming to a halt on the spot where you are currently standing. Although the map gives no such indication itself. It's probably for the best that it's not a magical Harry Potter map, you know? For a more detailed view of the map, go to your journal and select the map tab. Thank you, tutorial agent. You are a fantastic person. Uh, journal, map. There we go. Oh, it even tells me whether. Oh, that's cool. Wow, yeah, I should have bought this ages ago. <laughs> as soon as I had the money, I should have gone for this. There's a lot here, isn't there? The white ones are the ones I can... This is really buggy, by the way. This this thing here. All of these are, like, really difficult. Like, why is it being so weird? Just go up. Up! Up, I tell you! The Nick Nack stand is... We can, we can try that again. And that's not very difficult. I don't know what that is. But I know where it is. So we are kept to this side of the water right now. That's where I assume we're going to get access to later on when we fix the water bridge. So, I mean, the knickknack stand. Where is that? Behind the hotel, right? Let's go! Knickknack, paddywhack, give a... Knickknack, paddywhack, give a dog a bone. Yes, sir, yes, sir, free bags full. No, that's not it. Knickknack, paddywhack, give a dog a bone. Something about a dog. This old dog. Blah, blah, bloke. You know what I mean? I can't remember what it is. Nick knack, paddy whack, give a duck a bone. This old dog is going home. It's something like I don't remember the bloody song. That's actually a fallen slogan from aggressive youth orientated campaign. Yeah, I'm Let's go give this a go, I guess. Can I get there? How did I get there last time? Oh, yeah, okay. Right, okay, so. <laughs> um, what was the check? Savoir foire, right? Savoir foire? Savoir foire. So we need to maxim maximize our savoir foire. Suggestion, conceptualization, conceptualization, let's pre decor, let's come to reaction speed, physical better. Okay. Make sure nothing is draining my savoir foire. Of all four. Oh, right, shoes. Off they go. And there was another one, wasn't there? No, okay, is that it? It should be on four. I'm on three. Why am I on three? One, right, one of my items. I've missed it somewhere. Where is it? Who is hurting myself with what? Right, I'm just taking my pants off. <laughs> there we go. We are ready to rock. I misread that. It's... Sometimes the plus is at the top, and sometimes it's at the bottom. That's very stupid. Okay, here we go. Ready to rock. A tarpaulin cloak is still caught on the railing. No one has claimed it for their own. As you leap in the air, a chilly breeze engulfs you, sharpening your senses. Continue the voyage through the salty air. Oh yeah! As the concrete floor welcomes you, you realize it's been a while since you felt so alive. Alert, capable. Must be the adrenaline. Fantastic. I knew you could do it. My climbing down might not have been as disco as your jump, 
but at least we can explore the harbor now. With your feet firmly planted on the concrete, the noise of the harbor rushes back in. It's a big deal. Not only do I get my coat, which is not the big deal, it's it's I get access to the harbor, which is a huge plot point, obviously. And look at that. Plus one esprit de corps, plus one shivers. It's a beast of an item. It looks sick. I'm gonna put some pants back on. And some shoes. I kinda wanna change the shirt. Physical instrument I could get. Uh there we go. We're looking stylish, looking sexy. Okay, here we go. Very exciting. No, not not as exciting. I'm hoping I can open this door from this side and this will lead somewhere, basically. Oh, hello. The radio is emitting strange buzzing sounds. What's this? An imposing combination of a punch clock and a payphone is looking down at you from the wall. A note on the side says, Tokens unavailable due to strike. Use change. The machine swallows your coin and seems to be waiting for your next move. Don't fail me now, muscle memory. If we can do it, buddy. It's unclear whether you actually have muscle memory. <laughs> right now, your finger is just drawing vaguely occult patterns in the air. Sure, why not? Muscle memory is a tricky thing. Nothing tricky about that. You just do, fail, repeat, until it works. All it takes is motivation and practice. Okay, well, that's something for the future. A giant aspirin on the pillow and a pattern of coffee rings on the armrest. I forgot over here. Book. La Fume, volume one, number four. Okay, let's have a little look at that, shall we? The front of this quarterly journal features a large satirical portrait of the late King Friso. From the sides of his head, a pair of white antlers spread to the corners of the cover. Because Friso was incompetent, foolish, and cruel. In short, the embodiment of everything the Communards wished to overthrow. It's satire, you see. To your disappointment, there aren't any full-color pictures to direct your attention. Just column after column of closely set text, interrupted occasionally by little doodles in black and white. Do you love a little doodle? After rifling the pages with your thumb several times, you return to the table of contents. The magazine is divided into several sections. International development, Kunst und Kultur, and local concerns. Just inside the cover, there's also an editor's note. I guess we're going to read the magazine. Comrade, as you know, this journal takes its name from Mazov's immortal expression, Du Cristal a la Fume. This was his way of describing the way the rigid, crystalline structures of capitalist ideology turn to smoke under communism. But like the structures of capitalist ideology, we too are at risk of going a la fume. Unlike many publications which are content to spoon feed their readers reassuring drivel, la fume is committed to telling the radical truth, even when that truth may drive away potential subscribers. Only four issues in, and it sounds like they've already alienated their readership. So please, if you value our radical Mazovian perspective on contemporary politics, culture, and international affairs, please consider subscribing today. Yours in struggle, the editors. It's funny, I get really, um, not annoyed. I, I'm very wary whenever anyone suggests that they're going to tell the truth and they don't care if it drives, drives people away, yada, yada, yada. Because that in itself is a marketing tactic. If people think you're the one channel or the one influencer or the one magazine or the one whoever it is who's not afraid to tell the real truth, then that attracts people in and of itself because those people think they are also not brainwashed and also want, they also speak the real truth, etc. And the fact that this truth is immensely relative and everyone's truth is real to them. And I get really, it's a very right-wing thing in particular, where they think the people on the left are brainwashed by, like, the woke hive mind and the woke virus, as you'll hear a lot on Twitter and stuff like that. And they're all incredibly fucking stupid, so that's neither here nor there. The point is, it's the exact same sort of terminology they'll use to pull people in. Everyone thinks, like, if you ever go onto, like, a Twitter thread 
there's a whole Greta Thunberg thing with Andrew Tate lately. If you go onto it, all the people defending Tate, um, half the profiles, I guarantee half the profiles will have like free thinker or something in their name because that's what they hang on to. They think they're being controlled by the left. Never mind that half the goddamn planet, if not more at this point, thinks the same way they do. They think they're the radicalists. Anyways. What do you expect? It was laying around the office of the Debarders Union. They're probably bankrolling the thing. You flip back to the front of the magazine. The table of contents unfolds before you. I want to catch up on international developments. This section includes a long, tedious critique of the latest round of free trade negotiations between the EPIS nations and the Free State of Seminine. You also skip over an article about heavy fuel oil smuggling along the Mes Messina border. Something about bear wrestling in Samara. Book riots in Yugograd. Face it, you really aren't interested in foreign affairs. You're not even sure where most of these countries are. You flip back to the front of the magazine. It takes a moment, but gradually it dawns on you that Kunz und Kultur must mean arts and culture. Why they decided to title this one section in Volda is beyond you. Sounds very German, doesn't it? As you leaf through this section, you come across several reviews of recent radio plays, as well as a brief artist spotlight featuring a local artist identified only as CS. The main feature, though, is a long essay titled Tip Top Tourne, A Critical Mazovian Perspective. This so-called artist spotlight is really just a brief Q&A, made all the briefer by the subject's evident hostility to her interviewer. The actual article is surprisingly light on details, but after skimming a page or two, you gather that it has something to do with motor carriage racing. If you don't follow it, you only ever hear about the ludicrous sponsorships and obscene death toll. It's an interesting thing, this, because this is not story relevant, probably never ever going to come up, but it's really just there to round out the world a little bit further. Um, I don't think in most games it's the kind of thing I would tend to spend the time listening to, and I don't know if it's just because I've got an incredibly sexy voice reading it to me today, but um, it's making all the difference. You think you're settling in for a relaxing recap of the most recent season. Maybe sprinkled with some nice anecdotes about a few of the more colourful drivers. Instead, you find yourself skimming a 10,000 word feature about all the politically problematic aspects of Tip Top Tourney. What's wrong with Tip Top? Where to even start? For one, there's the crass commercialism of its sponsorships. And then there's the practically criminal emphasis on deadly motor crashes. So, all of it, basically. Oddly enough, this article has two bylines. Nasteb and Kalada Bernal and Exilus Buka. There's no way those are real <laughs> names. What's wrong with their beautiful names? Have you ever met anyone named Exilus? Come on, they're plainly pseudonyms. Exilus was my first love, thank you very much, conceptualization. What's so bad about sponsorships? Under capitalism, the article says, every pursuit has its price. Every pleasure, even one as elemental as the joy of racing others around a track, is reduced to an advertising opportunity. Thus, the so-called tournée becomes a competition between increasingly meaningless brand signifiers. Your discount laundry detergent racing against a pack of Astra cigarettes, or even a fritter. You gotta see them crush, though. And that precisely is what's problematic about it. Were it not for the promise of random, spectacular violence, audiences would quickly lose interest. At the end of the day, it's the destruction of these 750,000 real races that you're really watching for. I'm trying to think about that. I'm trying to contextualize that with my own enjoyment of motor racing. And I do, I mean, I watch MMA, I watch boxing, although boxing is losing my interest these days, but I watch quite a lot of MMA. And you can't really say you watch MMA for anything other than violence. I'm not, I don't like it when people get really badly hurt, though. Like, every now and again, something terrible happens, someone will break a leg or something, and I don't like that. It's not the... Like, violence is good if nobody gets hurt, in a weird way, you know what I mean? 
And I think we I think we can understand that at a very principal basal level from a very early age. Like we enjoy playing violent video games. They're cool. <laughs> you know <laughs> like ninety it's less of a problem now with how indie games have just done their thing. But I mean we just played God of War Ragnarok on the channel and yeah there's loads of story and stuff, but I spent eighty percent of my time in God of War Ragnarok murdering indigenous creatures <laughs> it was enjoyable because violence is inherently enjoyable as long as nothing is actually suffering for it and you know we do that in everything we do that in so many different aspects of our life when you're a kid and you're play fighting or you know you're watching wrestling or i will think of more examples how violence ties into sexual desires as well that's kind of a thing it's just there's a lot of it you can enjoy violence without the violence, if that makes sense. I I think I, I think it makes sense. I'm not like for example, I do not watch F1 for the crashing. If there's a crash, it's interesting. I'm intrigued, excited, but I also don't want anyone to get hurt, obviously. Hmm. Sure, you think that, but subconsciously, it's the visions of brand names being engulfed in flames that you crave. That's not it, but it would be entertaining if it was. This flimsy magazine is <laughs> right. Deep down, you know the only true stakes are life and glory, or death by fiery dismemberment. So tired. Why am I so tired? That's because you haven't been reading critically. But don't worry. The whole point of these sorts of articles is to let someone else read critically for you. <laughs> Did you know Tip Top Tourne is actually an orgiastic ritual of capitalistic destruction? Let's just go with the, the slightly more calm option there. Ah, oh, come on. Can this article read your mind? No. Well, there you have it. No reason to get hung up on the pretentious ramblings of a few young men. Good point, Kisaragi. If I had to wager, I'd say they've never even seen the inside of a motor, much less a motor race. I take whatever they write with a large grain of salt. You can't have a large grain of salt because it's no longer get a grain. It's a large pinch of salt or a grain of salt. You can't have a large grain of salt. You can have a large pinch of grains of salt, but you can't have a large grain of salt because it's not a salt. It's not a grain anymore. It's a rock or a crystal or whatever. You flip back to the front of the magazine. The table of contents unfolds before you. I'm more passionate about that turn of phrase than this communist manifesto. <laughs> no, I don't. I mean, I have my issues with capitalism, etc., etc., but. Not in a reducing everything to those basal components kind of way. Like, I love football. I watch football all the time. And football is inundated with capitalism and advertising and all that nonsense. But I, as a viewer, want less and less advertising and brands in football, not more. I want them to fuck off. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, much of this section <clears throat> is taken up with articles declaring unqualified support for the dock workers' strike. Oh, excuse me. Okay, so that has clarified for me. The union is the people who are protesting outside of the gates and they have been replaced by I don't know how I describe the people inside the gates but they're like mercenaries right they're like scabs they could call them the scabs who have been brought in to do the work because they're not paying the unionists they're just working about them basically you skim the headlines paint the harbor red and white Martinez tames the wild pines a city in revolt First, we take Martinez, then we take La Delta. Finally, there's a brief article by the writer, G. Martin, accusing the owner of the Capeside Apartments of illegally attempting to evict certain communist tenants simply for not having paid their rent. Okay. Damn communists, I should have killed a lot of them when they had the chance. Not going to go with that one. <laughs> if it weren't for the wild pines, all those mooches would be out of a job. Not going to go for that either. The, the idea that just because you wouldn't have a job without a company does not give that company a right to treat you badly or underpay you, etc. Charging rent just to live, live somewhere is pretty outrageous. Weirdly enough, kind of agree. Um, I'm in a really weird place when it comes to landlords and home ownership because I always thought if I got enough money, that's an area I would invest in. Even while it's it's kind of like that, oh, you live in society yet you participate in it, mean, but kind of taken to another level. And that I do find the inherent concept of landlords and land ownership for profit in that way to be unethical. And yet it also is a very, very, very sensible way to invest if you have that capital. 
as it turns out, it looks like I'm never going to have that capital, so it's not really a concern. But I have got a internal moralistic conflict about those two opposing ideals. On the one hand, I, I can be quite capitalist on one hand, and on the other hand, I want to burn all the system down. So, you know, people... We're more than shades of grey, aren't we? Wouldn't it be better if labour and capital could reach some reasonable accommodation? That's, I mean, yes. Because I think... I have nothing against capitalism. I think capitalism's a good system. The problem is when it becomes rampant, unfair capitalism. And the problem I then tie back to is I feel like capitalism, as an inherent part of the system, favours that as an end goal anyway. Like, you can't have an equitable capitalistic society because it's just not built into capitalism itself so anyway. according to these editorials there can be no accommodation with the forces of international capital or their mucilaginous allies in the coalition judging from the context it's something very large and fundamental you should probably know about it already honestly <laughs> you flip back to the front of the magazine the table of contents unfolds before you so we know more about the world now. We didn't gain anything for the game. We just know What's more. This? We're getting about the world. reports of normal, reasonable, temperate political opinions somewhere in Martinez. <laughs> That's me, Mr. Reasonable. The air suddenly feels calmer. More transparent in a strangely tender way. Perhaps it's the hangover. Perhaps it's a temporary surge of serotonin. But something tells you it's time. To become a citizen of the kingdom of conscience. Okay, so this is another... I don't really want... I, I feel like this is leading me towards being a centrist, and I'm not a centrist, and most centrists are dicks. <laughs> like, I mean this in the nicest way. They're not. Like, you can, in theory, hold a centrist political ideology, but you can't universally do that. You can't say, oh, I'm centre on everything. It's not. It's not an ideology. I'm left-leaning on, like, 99% of policies, I would suggest. Um, or, let's say it's 90, but I still would always call myself left. Because things like abortion rights, uh, gay rights, like, basic human rights for anyone who isn't a straight white guy, basically, is a left-of-politics issue. So if you say you're centrist on an issue like abortion, or gay rights, or interracial marriage or charity or like how much we spend on the military or like universal healthcare and all of these things which are very much left-leaning politics if you say you're central you're a centrist to that you can see both sides then i don't really want to talk to you you're sitting on the fence but in a cowardly dickheadish kind of way because there is no right or wrong when it comes well there is a right or wrong this is my point there's no reasonable alternate take on something like abortion issues as far as I'm concerned. Like you're either on the left and on the right side of the ironically on the right of the issue as in you're pro abortion and women's autonomy over their bodies or you're a bad person. There's no middle ground as far as I'm concerned. If any part of your statement's like well I can kind of see that side or well you know I, I don't want to kill the babies I just think you're an idiot. I'm sorry if you're watching this video and you're one of those people. <laughs> Um, it's just the way it is. I really struggle with that. And it's the same with gay rights and all that kind of, and universal healthcare. Universal healthcare, I can see why people are a little bit different on it, because I think Americans in particular have been kind of brainwashed from birth, so it's not really your fault if you've been brainwashed. But, um, now I sound like I'm on the right, but... <laughs> Anyways, that, that's just, what is the kingdom of conscience? It is not a place. It is a moment in time that can only arise in the right circumstances. In all of human history, it's only been achieved a handful of times. How do you bring them about? Incrementally. Yawn. You'd get there faster with a little speed. History's greatest catastrophes have been brought about by people trying to make the world a better place too quickly. That's the genius of Dolores Day. She recognized that progress is meaningless if its gains are lost because of instability. Real, lasting change can only come about gradually, increment by increment. What about all the things that are wrong right now? Tisk tisk. Just because you live in the present doesn't mean you have the right to place your needs above the needs of the future. You may never live to see the kingdom of conscience. Your children may not. Even your grandchildren might not. But that's no excuse not to keep working. 
What rationality? What a fucking joke. <laughs> right, is the kingdom conscious really about doing things or preserving the status quo? Do you believe the status quo is preferable to chaos and bloodshed? No. Then you've never lived through real chaos. Sometimes, in the face of great disaster, defending the status quo is progress. Okay, what's it like? The kingdom is difficult to comprehend and even more difficult to describe, partly because humanity will need to discard many of the categories that define and limit it today. The kingdom of conscience is post-capitalist, post-national. It's also post-industrial, post-ideological, and even post-sexual. <coughs> I'm tempted by this one just because it says Alonzi, which um, hits me on a deep level. I mean, if I opt in, don't I just get the option and then I don't have to take it? It's interesting. I'm trying to think about what it's saying. I don't. It's it's hard to <laughs> quite put together what it is suggesting. It's trying to build for a better future, but a very very long way away, moving past all our current gripes and issues. But you know, I'm gonna opt in. Slow down, Mister Reasonable. Did you miss the part about compromising and taking things slow? I don't agree with this. That's right. Remember, real democracy is just around the corner for Revershaw. When that real democracy kicks in, a long time from now, we are all going to be so much happier. I, I kind of regret clicking that to be honest. Because I feel like, it, yeah, it's sort of it's here. Um... It's funny, I'm kind of in like, and this is this is why I like this game, because like, I haven't done anything. I'm 36 minutes in, all I can do is talk nonsense and it works. Um, I'm very much in two minds about what's been presented there, because to an extent, I do think you have to, you do that sometimes. Sometimes you have to play the long game. Sometimes you can't go, oh, I need this right now, let's make it happen. You have to accept the world is as the world is, and that some things aren't going to change right now or immediately, and you have to play smart, and you have to play and... You know, the kind of immediate now, now, now kind of thing feels quite childish to me in a way. And yes, we may not like how the world works, but that is how the world works, right? So you kind of need to adjust to that. On the other hand, as we've seen in myriad times, we see things like with um, the riots after George Floyd died, etc. And people are like, well, this is the wrong way to do it. And no, shouldn't you be doing this peacefully? Yada, yada, yada. You know, without all this fire and chaos, as the game just said. And the thing is, people have been protesting and trying to bring attention to this issue for decades, for literal decades, for centuries, actually, realistically, for centuries. Um, and nothing was changing. So, you know, if you try incremental change and nothing fucking happens, then chaos on fire is the way to go. You have to get attention somehow. So I would take, a, I would take like a mixed approach, personally. You could try to do things the smart and slow way build things better for the future, but if things aren't changing, and let's be honest, things aren't changing in this regard, things are worse in some ways, especially when it comes to capitalistic structure, things are getting worse and worse and worse and worse as far as I'm concerned. The middle class is essentially disappearing and more and more people are being pulled down to working class, not to say they're wrong being working class, but people are being pulled down to working class and the rich are getting even richer. That hasn't improved, that's just getting worse and worse and worse despite what incremental change people might attempt. So at some point you have to burn the fucking system down and try again. You know? <laughs> am I a socialist? <laughs> right, anyway, let's click some things. We're in the offices for the union. Every worker, member of the board, is written at the top of the flyers. At the bottom, the union logo and demand democracy. This is a Dewey typewriter. The model name is on the back. A standard office file cabinet. Drawers are locked. Someone left the coffee machine on. What's this? Oh, it's a book. Oh, it's a postcard. Le Jardin 21. La Jardin La Blah Blah Blah. La Blah Blah. Do -do. This laminated postcard offers a glimpse across the river. A little more than a decade after the war, the eastern bank is already fully renovated. The hillsides are lush with gardens and residences. Someone's parked a small beige airship by the fountain. This postcard will sell for a pretty penny. Well, 34. Not really pretty pennies. Oh, hello. On second glance, someone has forgotten to properly close one of the drawers. I like this, because it, it seems like the file cabinet is speaking to me, which I guess in a way it kind of is. You let the objects in the room talk to you. 
see what they're saying. It's unfortunate for the Union to just leave their paperwork lying around like this. Very unfortunate, Kitsuragi. The drawer opens smoothly. Inside is a well-organized selection of brown folders. Hundreds of documents containing logistical data. Two kinds of transactions stand out. Materials coming into Revachol from the outside world, from Muindi, Grad, and even Ilmara, and the same materials being handed over to companies inside Revachol, Kuron, Coal City, La Delta, and Jamrock are listed among the many districts where the imports are being sold. Okay. It's hard to make sense of this thicket of company names, dates, quantities, and percentages. You try to focus, but the lines are getting below the draw. So I'm just going to see if I can... This is why I don't like the system. I just want to see if I can increase my volition at all. Not there. Volition... Well, this is impossible to read at this point in time. <laughs> How am I able to read this on this background? Bloody hell. But anyways, there's no minus, which means my volition can't go any higher than it is right now, so we may as well try. The file cabinet stands steady as ever. Whatever's hidden here is hidden well. Concentration isn't enough. Only a trained accountant with a background in logistics would be able to really make sense of it. However, there is a little handwritten note stuck on the side of the drawer. Look at the note. It appears to be a to-do list written in large, uneven capital letters. Remember, Leo, Everard's shoes, special whirling borscht, water Everard's plants, sweet office floor, more banners. All items on the list have been crossed out and the note itself is crumpled. Look, Kim, a to-do note with a list of errands for Everard. Everard Claire, probably, yeah. the head of the Debarders Union. One of his aides must have left it. Nothing incriminating here. Um, I don't see anything interesting. The shoes may be connected to the boots with the offer. I doubt it. The special borscht seems a bit odd in the list. Is that alcohol? What is so special about this borscht? Code for drugs? Booze? Blood? Remember, Leo, all items on the list the drawer slide. Hmm. Curiouser and curiouser. I don't know where to go. I want to go back outside and explore that area. What's this? Oh, magnesium. Nice. But I also want to go down here. <gasps> Look at those cool glasses. I could be a cool boy. I always wanted to be a cool boy. Alright, my glasses plus one logic, minus one authority, or we can go plus one visual calculus, minus one drama. Visual calculus right now. That's drama. Drama's three. Calculus is five. Yeah. I feel like it's probably more helpful. It's hard to know, really. This door's locked and coming open from the side of that pass card. Guess you have no choice but to talk to you. Oh, okay. Hmm. Bottles! Money! <laughs> I know what I'm about, son. I know what I'm about. Hobo Carp. I mean, we need cash at the end of the day. Numerous bottles of Commodore Red and potent pills there. Nuts for the pills. At least three packs worth of cigarette butts. Is it? It's not nuts for the pills. What is it? I can't remember. This is the night watchman's booth. The name on the door reads, Rene Arnaud. Got the ills for the pills? What does he say? What does Teddy say? Listen. It's okay to take a few minutes to yourself. Sit down and have a breather. Oh, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna search. If you must. But please hurry, we are pretty easy to spot up here. Nothing incriminating catches your eye. The cabinets are clean and their sparse contents meticulously organized. There's a framed photograph on the table. It's a black and white photo of a young couple out in a street fair. The man, Rene, is dressed in a Royal Carabiner uniform. The girl is young and very pretty. She is smiling playfully at the camera. Why did you take that picture of Rene? Mm. <laughs> I'm gonna ask him about it. I'm making an artistic photo college. You're Hello. really interested in that old soldier. Not sure I understand your fascination, but sure. As long as it doesn't take up a whole lot of time. Should we sit down? 
The chair is not as austere as the rest of the booth. A thin gray pillow is attached to the seat, secured to the stiles by black ribbons. Stale air floods through your nostrils. Not a single mote of dust floats inside your lungs, though. The inside of the booth is immaculate. We feel better. You stand and exit the booth. I feel better. Okay, so we can't go this way. All right, there's a lot going on here. I've got the stupid photo that I picked up for no apparent reason. There you go. Happy couple. Yet another. Well, we've got a dun at least. Always oh, nice to see the duns. The duns make me happy. I really want to fill that up. But boy, there's a lot going on here. Got to talk to Renee at some point. Can't go down that way. This way, probably. All around you, great machines and quizzles. Quiz, 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 White pine trees are printed on the screen covering. Looks like a forest under snow. Hey, we got into the docks, you know? Progress. Just gonna click some random ass buttons. <laughs> a rusting control panel with several knobs. Two buttons marked Mush and Aret are faded with use. It seems to control the large crane above. A container is attached to its hook block. Marsh. On. Aret. Off. On. With a loud grind, the crane shifts overhead, moving a massive metal container through the air. Success. Probably. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like that's probably important somehow. I really like the visual style of this game, but it can be very hard to figure out how things come together sometimes. That doesn't make sense over there to me, on that left side. Oh, that is an edge, isn't it? And with a surprisingly quiet thunk, the crane places the container down. The harbour sleeps as the strike rages in the distance. The crane can rest again, now that its purpose has been fulfilled. Moving this container of course. For this purpose it was built. For this purpose it has acted. And now it will rest. I can't see how that was worth the records. Except for <laughs> seeing the crane in action. Which I admit was satisfying. You'll understand one day, Kitsuragi. You just don't have my instinctual detective skills, you know? What's now out of the way, more importantly than anything. Oh, sweet. You see faded industrial lettering on the platform. Valsund. Before you stands a cargo container. Just one of many in the yard. I've decided it's important for no apparent reason. <sighs> Is this like your thing with that wall again? <laughs> I don't know. Let's find out. You do? Because I don't. Why not? There are a million containers here. Why are you fixating on this one? It was hanging from the crane. You just picked one out because you wanted to interact with a cargo container. We are not here to interact with containers. We are here to get the body down from the tree. No reply. The knot produces a hollow <laughs> ring of metal. Doesn't sound like there's anything inside the container. No reply. The knot produces okay. a... Okay. Wait, no, I can open the door. Screw it, open it. You attempt to turn oh. the handle to no avail. The doors seem to be mechanically locked. To your left, the lieutenant considers your actions with some puzzlement. <laughs> we get a three percent. We can do this. We're gonna persuade the door to open. Why are you even trying to open a door with rhetoric? I don't know. Three percent chance. Why are you what? <laughs> Never mind. Are you satisfied, detective? Yeah. I'll be back though. I'll be back. You and me are gonna have words. Door. I don't think you're getting away that easily, Bucko. Can I not go down here? Okay. I thought that was the right way to go, actually. So I'm a little... Oh, we can't go this way. Ah. The shipyard head is oddly quiet. The great machines are sleeping. Pile cargo belts used for heavy lifting. One says vermilion. I need 20 to pay for my bloody bill. The speaker tower is silent. There's no work to organize in the yard below. Oh, hello. You're blue. What are you? 
The musk of oil and rust comes from the chasm in front of you. It smells like blood. Oh, nice. Nice, like actual positive clothing. <laughs> do I have gloves on it? Yeah, I do. Electrochemistry. Well, I don't really like electrochemistry, as it happens, so half light. Stop trying to be bloody drug addled like I am right now, you know? Got enough! We're rich! We're rich, Kitsuragi! Okay. The coffee in the giant furnaces is still lukewarm. Is anyone here? Oh, hello. A stair made of palace leading up. I'm gonna expect your room before I talk to you. That sounds like a terrible idea. Let's do it. Is this the leader of the union? A taxidermy fish that tells time. <laughs> okay, let's chat. We finally got here. Before you is a walrus of a man, seated behind a large desk. He looks up from his work, not the least bit surprised Do to you see know him. what I went through to get here, Everett? With great effort, he straightens himself up in his chair, yet says nothing. He simply stares at you. Wait, so this, this guy is in charge of not the union workers, but the replacement ones who've come in, right? Welcome, Mr. Dubois, Mr. Kitsuragi. It's good of you two to stop by. Please, have a seat. I'm Everard, Everard Clare, head of the Debardes Union here in Martinez. Okay, now, it's the other way around. I'd offer you my hand, but unfortunately my health prevents me from getting up. You understand? He looks extremely comfortable. The tiny folding chair, on the other hand, looks like a torture device. You go ahead, detective. Whatever he has in store for you, it can't be good. He thinks, I'll do my best. Forget about that. What's with this Dubois stuff? You're getting some seriously bad vibes from that name. I promised, ah, uh, let me think about this. Does standing assert authority? Does it seem rude? Does it seem weird? Would you take a seat? What would I do? Let me just think. I would take a seat, so I'm gonna take a seat. Excellent, Mr. Dubois. I can see that you're a reasonable man, and reasonable men Reasonable men can be of great use to one another. I'm not going to wink back, that's mad. <laughs> so tell me, how can the head of the Debardes Union help a representative of the Revishal Citizens Militia today? The chair you're sitting on has got to be the most uncomfortable chair in the world. It's violating your backside. You know what? I should have said it out loud because I thought there will be punishment and I bet it hurts me. I bet it hurts me. I knew it was coming. Oh, uh, by the way, I heard you got a rather rude reception from a certain Lawrence Gart. Some people have no manners, it pains me to say. You know a little bit too much, Claire, I gotta say. This should take care of that nonsense. He points to a giant novelty check on his desk. It's absolutely comically huge. It should be sufficient to cover your expenses for a few days and patch over your differences with a cafeteria manager. Go ahead, take it. Wow, that's 25 real. That's good money. You need it. Interesting. Okay, wait, you know, girl, let's start there. Yes, I know, Lawrence. He's a real character. No union man in him. A real piece of work, that boy is. With a grin, he points to the checker game. It's like you're on a game show. At least don't thank him for it. I mean, I don't desperately need... I do... I, okay, I do need the cash, I'm not going to lie. But... I don't... I think taking it puts me in a weak position. Right? Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deny it. Okay, okay. I respect a man with principles. No handouts, then. He crosses his arms on his ample midsection and sinks further into the chair. Now... I'd like to set your mind at ease about one other matter. Your lost gun. Let me assure you, Union people are on it as we speak. I've got my best hounds looking for that lost gun. His slug-like lips move, but all you hear is an echo. Lost gun. Lost gun. Lost gun. The world is swallowed by a black hole of fear. Only two words escape its gravitational pull. Lost and gun. I'm taking a beating in this conversation. Jesus Christ. How do you know about my lost gun? I'm not too worried. I got this. <sighs> Are you all right, Harry? You say you got this, but you seem a little anxious to me. Don't be. 
Everything's going to be all right. I get the feeling he knows me. It's not like you left it loaded. You didn't lose a loaded gun. Local children aren't out there playing with it right now, pointing it into their own mouths. It's in a safe place. I just know it. I have a feeling everything's going to be all oh, right. Oh, goddamn chair. Oh. God, you're sweating. Your knee is jerking. You're about to cry, aren't you? You're about to cry because you lost your gun and those children are going to shoot themselves with it. <laughs> I'm getting ruined by this chair. I'm not about to cry. Mr. Dubois, you don't look so good. Let me alone. What is this Mr. Dubois he keeps repeating? What is he trying to pull here? You need to cool the fuck down. Chill. Mr. Dubois. Mr. Dubois. Harry. The large man snaps his fingers to no effect. Keep sliding down the chair. <laughs> there are no Harrys. Let your mind go to your safe. <laughs> I just want to take control of the situation. My guy is losing it. Um... Mr. Dubois, are you okay? Can I get you a glass of water or something? Are you having some kind of medical emergency? Maybe you could use your hands somehow in a kind of throw in motion. Like you're throwing that Mr. Dubois act right back at him. He's Mr. Dubois. Actually, this chair is uncomfortable. I could use that glass of water. What an odd demonstration of... Huh. You got me, Harry. I don't even know what. As entertaining as it was, I'm afraid we're wasting our time. And I'm an extremely busy man, as I'm sure you are too. Okay, enough. We are here to ask you some questions pertaining to a murder investigation. Really all that happened there was I burned through my drug collection. <laughs> Quick, here's your window. Get yourself together and ask him questions. Police officer questions. It is about time to stop embarrassing yourself. Questions will help you regain some of your lost dignity. I want to talk about the hanging. Oh, of course. That's your main thing here. That's why you're in Martinez. I know everything that goes on around here, and I would love to discuss it with you. I'm not sure how I feel about this, Everett. I mean, it's no secret that the lynching is connected to the strike. So much to talk about. Honestly, it's been weighing on me so heavily. I understand you need to interview me. But there's a thing that's been keeping me up at night. I want to talk about the hanging. I mean, if we could just calmly talk, exchange information, we could blow this thing wide open. Yes, that sounds good. Let's do that. But I can't think straight with this thing weighing on me. You're police officers, aren't you? I have a crazy idea. <laughs> you guys are basically door-opening machines. Incredibly talented at opening doors. <laughs> Is that true, Kim? Help me out. I'm not sure I understand. If you're asking us to break down someone's door, it's not going to happen. Come now. I just need you to go open a little door for me and leave it unlocked. A simple thing. Absolutely nothing shady about it. You've, nobody has ever said nothing shady about it and then it's not actually been shady. So what, what's going on, Bucko? Does this jiggling ooze think he's going to use you? He's got another thing coming. Play his game, son, with your eyes peeled. He's going to slip up. And when he does, you're going to come out on top. Okay, so let's ask some more questions. Harry, I'm a very busy man, and more importantly, I don't have that extraordinary physique you do. You look like you could run around all day. You want to send someone a message that the police are working for you. I repeat, I'm a very, very busy man, Mr. Kitsuragi, and therefore I must occasionally enlist outside help. So what will it be, Harry? Whose door is it? Oh, no one's. It's just a weasel. A weasel lives there. Nothing for you to worry about. Who is this weasel? A loud blabbering weasel. When weasels feel no one is watching, they start acting foolishly. Just go there, unlock the door and leave it open. It's been such a burden on me, Harry. I just want this to be over so I can discuss business with you. I mean, I'm not going to do it. Harry, my dear friend, I am what people call a local bigwig. I know everything that goes on in Martinez. I'm not doing that. Of course, Harry, I understand. But if that's the case, I don't think we'll ever find your gun. Even worse, we won't be able to speak like equals about the murder. Perhaps this was just bad timing for you. 
know that you can always come back to me. I really hope you do. For your sake, my sake, and for your gun's sake too. Yes, we both understand what you meant. <laughs> this may be the only way, he thinks. I won't hold it against you. In fact, we probably should reconsider later. Uh, I don't... I, I, the game wants me to do it, but I don't want to do it. Are you going to ask me how I got in? Harry, honestly, I'm just relieved you didn't get a hernia. A man your age? Mm. The big man peers at you over the rims of his glasses for a moment, then interlaces his fingers and rests his chin on his hands. Anyway, I assure you, I am a very well-informed man. Information reaches me before I even get the chance to request it. You called me Mr. Dubois, why? Of course. Let us dispatch with the formalities. You call me Everard, I call you Harry. That's what the Hang of the Corpse called you. Harry. <laughs> That's really my name. My god, so it's true. I didn't want to believe it, but you are a fantastic science fiction amnesiac cop, aren't you? What are the odds of that? I think the odds of that are very low. <laughs> it might be a good idea to hide your confusion. I mean, see what his game is first. Just testing your bucko. So good to hear that, Harry. Apparently my sources were wrong. However, if you did have a spot of memory trouble, I could help you out. With my big fat folder. Basically, that's all the girls. Words flow like a river of honey from his lips. I guess word has already reached him. No matter. No harm done. It's just a brown folder. You can't make out what's written on it. Are you trying to tell me you've gotten hold of some of our documents? Mr. Kitsuragi, would you mind? Me and Harry are talking about his lost identity right now. Don't just jump to the folder. That's not smart. Shows you're on the edge. Do some probing first. Annoyingly, I had four in drama and I took off the bloody thing. Do you know anything? Uh, let's get this straight. What's my full name? It's Harry. Harry Dubois. <laughs> my name is Raphael Custo. Oh, God. I can work with And it. I can work with you, Harry. Now, what else can I do for you? Do you know anything about my family? Family? Harry, you're not a family man. There's not one peep of family in here. Unless you think you're a family man. Do you strike yourself as a family man, Harry? You know what? I think I'd be a wonderful father. Well, yes. I'm sure you're going to make one little boy or a girl very happy and proud one day, Harry. Where did you get that folder? Ah, this. My friends in your organization gave it to me, Harry. This translates into, haha, you guys are so corrupt. I find that very suspicious. May I have a look? I'm afraid this is meant for union eyes only, Mr. Kitsuragi. I'm sure you understand. Please Get continue, there. Harry. Get in there. Well, Harry, if I were to sum you up in one word, it would be apologetic. I know, but I'm confident. I'm a man about town. Well, you sure come off as very confident in all our interactions, Harry. <laughs> You're a real man's man. This is a red... Okay, one sec. Of course, Harry, of course. Wait. You need this to get in and out through the gate. Thanks. Here. You're one of us now. A real red and white union man. Take care, Harry. Yeah, I'm going to chat. To, well, we'll do it next video. But I'm just going to... Where's my... Where's my drama? My drama clothes. Again, I find the system stupid. I'm going to keep saying that until I don't find it stupid anymore. It's not that I had drama clothes. It's that I'm wearing something that takes away from it. Is it this? These? Okay. So, wait. I'm going to save it now. Mr. Dubois. A pleasure as always. You don't have to sit down this time. Let's hear it, Harry. Okay, cool. Of course, Harry. I'll see you soon. It's a red check. If it was a white check, I'd have probably just gone for it. But because it's a red check, I don't get to try it again. I don't want to risk it. So we're going to go for the 80 in the next video. Um, I'm going to do a proper save. That's not how I did a proper save. Anywho, next video, we will talk to him again. Try to get more information out of him. Check out what this folder is all about. Um, what time is it? It's 11.37. I need to do about a bajillion other things. So that's exciting. 
we shall uh, get on that next video. Thank you very much for joining me. I'll see you lovely folks very soon. Cheers, much love as always. Bye-bye.